All right, so this mainspring housing came with some extra material on it, both on the back and then the bottom corner there. And here I'm just uh, need to take some of that off on that corner to even it up with the frame. The fine file didn't do much. That coarser one didn't do much. Um, it's kind of a big flat surface, so I probably shouldn't have expected it to take off material too well. So came out to the bench grinder, and that does a great job. Takes material off pretty quickly. It's interesting that the sparks from titanium are a different color than the sparks from steel. At least I thought that was interesting. So I'm just going pretty easy. Trying not to take off too much. So that grinder takes off pretty quickly. And I'm actually taking off some from the frame too, just so I can blend it all. Not taking it off just from the bottom of the mainspring housing, but blending the two sides of the frame and the middle mainspring housing there all together. Now back upstairs, and this is that number two pillar file again. Just trying to round things over, even it out a little bit. Take the rough finish off that the bench grinder gave. And I filed in that direction, then I filed across. Since it's a compound curve, just trying to get a nice smooth curve on the bottom corner there. And I've used these sandpaper strips before. This is for a sanding stick and it helps remove facets and give you a nice smooth curve. And it did a nice job here too, although it's kind of hard to keep from popping off that corner. But it worked okay. And doing that grinding took uh, one or two of the bottom rows, the checkering, off. So I'm just doing a little bit of touch up with the checkering file to repair the bottom, bottom row or two. And here the beaver, the, the side of the beaver tail grip safety wasn't quite flush with the frame, so I'm just taking a little bit off the side of the beaver tail grip safety. So basically what I'm doing in this entire video is looking for any imperfections and spots where I need to blend or make things flush or smooth things out. And there are a lot of different spots I cleaned up. And the Dremel, since it's got that rounded sanding drum, does a pretty nice job. Work on the inside of a curve there. That part's flat, but... It does okay there, too. It's really easy to, to be precise with the Dremel, I think. Some folks are nervous with it, but you can really be delicate with it and take off just a hair. And it does a real nice job blending things like the inside of the beaver tail grip safety with the frame there.
Although, as I said in a previous video, the titanium really makes quick work of these sanding drums. They don't last long at all. In the back corner of each of the thumb safety halves was kind of sharp, had a crisp edge, so just knocking that off, smoothing that out so there's not that uncomfortable corner back there by your hand. I spent quite a while before on the mag catch, getting it to work and smoothing it out some, but another guy commented a while back, apologize for not recalling your name, um, about how he did a little work on the inside of that mag catch to smooth it out, so that was some 600 grit, just trying to smooth out the inside of the mag catch there, because there is movement, there's a spring and another little gizmo in there, I just wanted to make sure that was smooth. And here just was doing some blending with the Dremel there on the rear of the slide where it mates with the frame. And continuing here to smooth that out some. Now just knocking those sharp corners off. inside corners. They're a little tricky. I'm trying not to mess up the firing pin stop and the firing pin. I probably should have just removed those for this. Anyway, it was a little tricky keeping that file in there, but I didn't need to take much off, so no big deal. A couple of strokes did the trick. Yeah, just doing a little more cleanup on that back corner. Now the grip screws protrude into the magwell a little bit. And obviously that's bad because you don't want those things sticking in there when you're shoving the magazine in there. So needed to file those down and also just in general smooth out the inside of the mag wheel. So here I'm just taking off the head of that screw a little bit or the, the shaft of that screw to get it down flush with the inside of the mag wheel. Here we've got some 220 grit and a piece of wood that I rounded the corners over on. The two front corners of the magwell are sharp, they're square, but the two rear corners are rounded, so I wanted to be able to get into there in these rounded corners of this block, let me do that. And mostly though I'm focusing on just smoothing out the main surfaces there that the magazine will ride against. And you can see the mag catch poking up there. And now the magazine moves in and out real freely. even with it, when it's empty you can see here it doesn't need a bunch of weight it drops free and I put the uh, mag catch back in I didn't get video of it and when you press the mag release button or the mag catch when you shove in on it the mag just goes shooting out so that's great Now here you can see the set screw on the trigger bumping into the mag catch there And now I'm going to do what may be the final assembly before I shoot the gun. So this is the first time I've really gotten in there and cleaned everything up real well. So go through all the parts and do a little scrubbing, clean it all up, and then oil it and put it all together.
that's I think that's gun butter if you're wondering I put that pin in too far so I just ran it the rest of the way through and tried it again. And I got a 28 pound spring here, the recoil spring. I didn't know if it would be really hard to put the slide on with that 28 pound spring, but it actually wasn't too bad. So after I'm done here, I'm going to look at things closely again and just see if I missed anything. And so I may do a little more cleanup, but I think it's in pretty good shape. 